Hey, welcome to Structure Fishing. I'm Jim Shell. Today, I've got a video. I'm going to talk about mapping and interpretation. It's a subject that doesn't get discussed too much, and uh, let's dive into it. Now, I'm going to be talking about the first lake I ever mapped, and that was uh, Otter Lake in central or south central Illinois. Uh, now, this goes back to 1993, 94-ish that I mapped this lake. Um, and this subject's going to be on mapping interpretation, but I'm going to, you know, show you this example when I mapped Otter Lake. Now let's back up to uh, 19, the early 1990s. The internet was just coming around, but you couldn't get information like you can today. Uh, there is no high definition maps, just basic contour maps here. And this is exactly how the map looked in uh, the early 90s. It was just a basic contour map just like this. It wasn't uh, high definition maps didn't come out until I don't know I'm guessing maybe the late 90s early 2000s roughly and those were just the very big popular lakes. Later these lakes became mapped. Uh, you know a, a, a lot of these other lakes. Um, now I'm going to show you how I map this lake or, or you know, tackle this lake, I should say. And um, I'm going to show you the, the structures I found. And I'm gonna, we have a couple of interesting stories that I think you'll find entertaining that get a point across. And then also at the very end, I found old uh, footage from uh, the, the time I was fishing this lake, uh, catching some muskies. Now, I heard up, I'm not sure how, how I heard about this lake. It wasn't obviously the Internet. I think it was just maybe pamphlets that the state of Illinois issued out uh, talking about, you know, what lakes uh, they were stocking with muskies. And, you know, back in the mid-90s, uh, you didn't have a lot of lakes uh, uh, in Illinois that were stocked with muskies. You just had a handful of lakes. <clears throat> this Otter Lake intrigued me because at one time, I think maybe actually twice, it actually held a state record muskie. Uh, so uh, I had heard big fish were coming out of there, so... I went down there, and this is what the contour map looked like. It was a very basic contour map. I think it was only, it's in 10-foot contours. You see 10, 20, 30. Uh, you know, really doesn't give you anything here. It, all it does is show you a submerged roadbed. Uh, but as it turns out, it is so deep, it's, uh, it's not a fishing situation at all. So I went out here. Launch ramp is right here. I went out, and... I never went north of the, this north section. I just figured it was pretty shallow up in the headwaters. I was fishing summer patterns. So I started mapping and interpreting the lake. And back in the early 90s, the only tools you had to do that was a Buck Perry spoon plug that was designed with depth and speed control to bump the bottom. And <clears throat> back then, I all I had, I think, as a depth finder was just the old-fashioned fla uh, flashers that had been around forever. <clears throat> So I started trolling, you know, the shallow spoon plugs and just contour troll, looking for structures. And I didn't find any structures of any size or any substance until I got down to the dam area. Uh, and when I got down to the dam area, I found three structures. And I'm going to show you the actual maps I made of these structures. Uh, let me just pull up the map and I'll explain the process I did on, on making these maps here. <clears throat> but I fished this lake and I found three structures. One bar off of this point here, another bar around this point here, and a bar that came out over here. Let me just pull them up on here. Um, let me show you this one right here. This is a bar that is located approximately right here. Let's pull it up again. I, I call it number th three structures I found. I call it number three. You can see uh, you hand drawn maps, you know, back in the uh, probably can't remember it was 93 or 94 that I, I, I made this map or, or fish this like I made the map. So I just drew in a spillway here. I, I drew in, you know, that you got riprap here and you had this nice bar that came off the shoreline here. You know, I wrote, wrote in some depths <coughs> and how I went about doing this is just trolling the lures and you need markers markers is the best tool you can have to make maps like this you have to throw out markers and the markers help you 
position yourself on the structure, helps you understand or visualize the shape of the structure and know where you're at on the structure so you don't get lost. So you, uh, the markers is the biggest tool you need for mapping a structure. So as well as Buck Perry spoon plugs. So I was trolling this with the very size spoon plugs and I noticed, well, you got a big bar comes out here and I throw markers out and I drew the basic. Now it didn't, I didn't make this map in this detail on the first trip. I want to say I made, I made three trips out here and each time I fished it, I added details and just added more information to the map here. But I drew the basic break line of this uh, structure here. You can see here it broke a little 12 to, uh, or 15, maybe to 36 feet here, 15 to 42. Here it broke 12 feet. At the end it broke down to 15 feet. Here it broke 9 feet to 20 feet. So you want to write some general depths that you find out there and then write the depths off the key features here. Now at the very end of this bar here, point, uh, it, it's obvious contact point. You write the depths. You can see that it, it breaks 15 feet, 15 down to 30 here. And then you just write, you know, what your depths are. You can just, you can give this map to any structure fisherman and he's going to know exactly where to uh, spend all of his time on the structure here. And it's pretty obvious on this structure here at the point here. Um, but um, so I write all my depths in here. And then as you're fishing it, you know, the fish are going to show you where they're coming up, where the contact points are. And you can see on the map here that I've got muskies and bass coming off the end of the bar here. Uh, and then I've also caught some bass off a little, little finger here and a little finger over here. And I just add additional information. Like there was a big tree or brush pile uh, on the one side of this point here. And a uh, uh, real crappie zone there. I came back in the, later in the fall. Uh, you know, uh, trees and big brush like that is just a, a magnet for crappies. And I uh, was catching crappies off the end of this point too. <clears throat> then I also write here anchor and cast. Right at the end of the bar, very important. Uh, cast and uh, I wrote down some of the nicer fish I caught here at the end of the bar here uh, I wrote musky and bass. I caught a 37 and a 38 inch and a five and three quarter pound bass uh, You can see over here. I caught a pretty nice sized bass at this little finger here I wrote it down on one of the trips here. That was a 22 inch fish <clears throat> but uh, It was a very productive structure Let's look at the next structure I found, I call this uh, on my map here, oop, uh, number one, and that was located off of this point right over here. And let me get that uh, map back up here. Number one, there we go. <coughs> and oh, you can hear, see, I, I wrote some general information about the lake. That down by the dam, the main channel was around 50 to 52 feet deep, and the top uh, channel break line was 46 to 47 feet. Uh, this was just pretty much a deep, fl deep flat land um, uh, reservoir. <coughs> um, I don't. In this particular case, I really don't. We we always say the home of fish is the deepest water in the area. In this case, the flats are so deep by the channel. Um, you know, home of the fish is, 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 is just a deep water flat, not necessarily the channel when you're, when you're at this end of the reservoir here. One thing I did not write on here is watercolor. Uh, it's probably a good thing to do on your maps is write the watercolor. Uh, this lake is always, I would say, classified as probably like a medium yellow green watercolor. Uh, but here, in this case here, I, I was trolling down here. Now all of a sudden I found a nice little finger bar off of here. Then it cut back in over here. Then it came out. And you had another nice bar right over here. Uh, and this particular finger right here, it's same thing. I wrote snag. There was a big tree here, which I found out to be hold some crappies later on in the season as well. <coughs> and I wrote my depths on here. And, and once again, I'm throwing out markers. I'm, I get to the end. I realize there's a point here. I'll circle back and I throw out a marker over here. And then I'm fishing it. You know, then I realize there's another point over here. I'm throwing out a marker. And I'm visualizing with the markers out what the structure looks like. And I'm putting it on paper. And you're not going to draw it exact. You're not going to draw it the, you know, the scale. Um, you're trying to get, you know, how you see it when you're fishing out there. Now, I'm going to show you the actual contour maps now that this lake is mapped uh, uh, HD. Um, but let me get into that in a little bit later here. So then I wrote down here, 
anchor position off this point. I cut muskies off the end of this bar here. And at the point over here too, I put my anchor positions on here. You can see the depths. The end of this bar breaks 16 feet down to 32 feet on the front of it. On the side of it, it breaks down to 45 right to the deep water flat. And it got muskies off the end of it over here. <clears throat> this one over here breaks 15 feet down to 27. It seemed to flatten out a little bit at 27 feet, like you had a, a deeper break line here before it went down to the uh, a flat here once again. Uh, so you, you, it really pays to map this lake. And uh, I'm going to tell you some couple of stories after I get done telling you about the third structure I found here. Um, <clears throat> once again, you're trolling your lures. You're bumping the bottom. You're finding out what the shapes look like. You're throwing out markers. Put it on pencil and paper. And like I said, I, I think each... By the third time I came down here and fished it, I pretty much had these maps um, the way they look right now. And then here's the third structure I found, uh, which is right over here. This uh, It's coming out of this feeder creek here. <clears throat> now this one it was a little bit odd i mean it i was when, when i mapped this thing you get this long bar as you go down it gets a little narrower and narrower and it gets very ridge like you can see here i wrote the, brought down the depths here it's like five feet seven feet ten feet then the brake line gets to 12 15 20 and it's very good ridge like gets deeper and deeper as you go 22 26 36 at the very end of the bar it was probably 36 breaking to 42 here i wrote down a depth 26 breaking to 41 and this is the only structure that i really couldn't figure out why fish weren't why weren't wasn't catching fish here i fished this deep stuff thinking what muskie is that this would just be loaded with muskies never caught a single muskie here all the muskies i came and i wrote down here rolling bar i mean it just uh you know the fish are going to tell you where they're coming up at and the only thing i can think of is there's that feeder creek comes over here and maybe those fish are following this feeder creek although it's not a very uh distinct feeder creek it doesn't stick out on the map or, or, or on your depth finder that it's a distinct feeder creek channel um but once again you gotta let the fish tell you where they're coming up on where they're using this structure and I was getting all my muskies right here. Didn't get any fish over here. This is the only one that was a little bit odd. And the biggest muskie I happened to get was a 41-incher right over here. Now, remember, this is in the mid-1990s. Catching a 36-inch muskie in Illinois was a pretty big deal back then. <clears throat> and another thing that was pretty interesting to see, I fished this lake for a good three or four years in a row, and it was very interesting to see these muskies grow each year I was fishing it. The first year that I really tied into the muskies, most of the fish were in the 32 to 34 inch range. And then the following year, they were 34 to 36 inches. And in the third year, they were all uh, 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 36 to 38, a uh, couple 39s and 40s in there. It's pretty interesting to see how they went up in there. Um, from what I understand, they sack muskies in here every year, but it was must have been that particular year. Um, they must have had a very high uh, survival rate. And they did pretty good out here. Um, but now I'm going to tell you a couple of stories about this lake. Because <clears throat> I fished this lake three times. a multiple, uh, And once I had these structures mapped out, I fished them. And, and they, these three structures stick out like a sore thumb here. You got this whole this reservoir, I think it's around maybe 800 acres. And, you know, there's just very short, shallow bar structures here. Nothing at all like this dam area. These The dam area here are the only structures that are long, flat, and nice big structures. Uh, the rest of it here, very short bars. Very short bars. The only other bar that I found <coughs> that I caught actually some largemouth bass off of it was, I think, back in here. If I'm not mistaken, I think there's a, a nice size bar right at this point over here. And we, and we tied into the couple of schools of largemouth bass there but every muskie i caught in this lake were off these uh, one of these three structures down here okay but i'm going to tell you a little i uh, don't give up on a lake i mapped this thing and i had my maps here and i thought man i, I you know I, I should be killing this lake and i went down here and fished this thing three trips 
after I mapped the structures out, I went down here three trips, did not catch a single muskie. And I thought, well, I, it, I, and it was fairly decent conditions. I don't remember the exact time of the year, but I know it was a summer pattern that I should have caught fish. And I re, if I recall right, the weather wasn't that bad. I, I figured if this lake's got any muskies in here, I'm going to catch them. Didn't get any on the first trip. Spent a second day down here a week or two later. Nothing. I went down a third time and got skunked again. I was down here for three trips, and I thought, if I don't get a muskie in three trips, I'm riding the lake off. Well, I was driving down, fishing some lakes not too far from this, and I was like, you know, I invested so much time making these maps. I'm still dumbfounded. that I, I can't, didn't even catch one muskie. And I swore after the third trip I was going to write the lake off and not come down again. Well, I don't know what, what made me do it, but I came down for the fourth time. And I'm glad I did because the, the muskies turned on. They were moving. And when I came down here that fourth time, I caught, I think it was a Saturday. And we had an outing, a club outing at Clinton Lake on Sunday. So I fished it this Saturday and I caught nine muskies. And I was really interested to see which structure was going to be the primary structure. And I got three muskies on each structure. Structure number one, three. Structure number two, three. And structure number three, three muskies. So I had nine muskies. So now I was like, yes, it paid off for me. Uh, and then I came down the following weekend and caught uh, ten muskies. It was a Sunday. And... Uh, I fished, uh, didn't even fish the whole day because it was on a Sunday. I think I fished from, you know, probably 6.30 in the morning until about 4 in the afternoon. And I got 10 muskies. And this lake was just on fire. And it was like that. Uh, every time I came down since then, I always caught muskies. Um, I got to tell a couple, uh, another uh, interesting story that I, get, that I got a kick, uh, kick out of. I was, uh, uh, well, you know what? Let me say that story for a little bit later in this discussion but i want to show you now that we i showed you my maps i'm going to show you what they actually look like contour maps now let's switch on this and we'll go to sonar charts i'm going to tell you another thing here too i came down here like i don't know maybe six years ago when i first got my garmin echo uh, uh, uh quick draw you know mapping thing and i wanted to see what this thing looked like since i was familiar with it and i mapped it and I'm the one that, and this is the only time I ever did this. I took all my sonar charts that I made of this lake and uh, sent them in to Garmin. And Garmin uploaded them, of course. You know, they get all their data like that from users. <clears throat> and they uh, uploaded here. So uh, uh, the charts you see looking here are the, the actual sonar charts that I sent Garmin like five or six years ago. So let's just compare what the actual structures look like to what I had mapped. Let's start with this one here. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up over to the side and let me see if I can pop up uh, my map. Uh, there we go. Uh, I'll try to get them off to the side here. You can see that, you know, every time I fish the lake, still to this day, this, my map is how I see the structure. When I'm out there trolling it, this is what I visualize and this is what it looks like to me. Uh, it, it, it's interesting to see what it actually looks like when you map it, or the actual contour map of the lake. Uh, you can see that there is indication that you do have this a, a short little bar here, as shown here. And you can sort of see an indication that there, it does cut back a little bit. And then you can see the indication that you got a pretty predominant point right here, which is right over here. Now, which, if I ever fish this lake, which map would I want to use out there? my map because my map is telling me where the break lines actually are how deep the break lines are this nothing wrong with this map this map is going to tell me that i've got a fishing situation here but it's not going to tell me that i've got a that it breaks 16 feet at the end of the bar here or that there's a snag here or it's not going to tell me that it breaks 15 feet over here i got a rough guess what it what it looks like here what that yeah i'm going to have a break around that area here but uh <clears throat> It's pretty interesting to see how my map looks compared to the actual uh, map here. Uh, but this map is the map 
that I want to care. I don't care after you map it. All I want to see is this information that's on this on this map here, your uh, hand drawn map. So let's go look at another area and just do the same comparison here. Uh, now, like I say, when I uh, go out there and fish it, this is how I see it. This break line to me runs pretty parallel with the rip wrap here, but off of it, you got like a deep slot in here, and then it makes a distinct sharp point at the end here and then it seems to gradually get you know a little bit wider here and you can see over here that this is what the actual mapping looks like i sort of think that garmin may have altered this a little bit to tell you the truth because when i look at it in my unit it, it seems to look resemble what i mapped a little bit more i think what garmin does is when users send in their data they sort of blend it with other data and they may alter it a little bit. I don't know, but uh, but you can see here that you got a you know a, a, a deep slot along the side of it. You can see you got an obvious point at the end of it here, and you can sort of see that you got a little finger here, and you know possibly another little finger over here, similar to what uh, uh, my map looks like. I keep on losing it. Let me pull it up here again. Uh, there we go. Um, but once again, this is the map I want on the water to fish with. This is telling me exactly how deep that break line is. It's telling me that at the end of the bar here, it breaks 15 feet down to 30 feet. Um, I got the little point here, which produced some bass, and a little point over there. <clears throat> and here's the third structure here. This is the one that you would think at the very end here, and it's like it shows here that it's pretty... Deep, narrow, ridge-like bar, you just get the break just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. You would think that this would be the dynamite structure on the lake. But I've, and I worked this multiple times, back and forth, this deeper stuff, and even over here. And every muskie I caught came, came like right over here in this area here. This is the only one that was a little, you know, puzzling to me. The only thing I can think of is you've got a, this feeder cut comes back in here. And for some reason, the fish are making contact right here. And it is fairly shallow here. Uh, still don't quite understand why the fish are coming up here. But it's one of those things. After you fish it, uh, you know, I, for several years, I kept on working this deep stuff, trying to get at least one muskie here. Never did. They always, every time I fish this structure, when I, the fish are moving, they were always here. So after several years of fishing it, I just stopped checking this. And I just would just concentrate here. Uh, <clears throat> oh, but let me go back to uh, a story here. Uh, well, first off, let me, I, I hope, uh, you know, mapping interpretation, uh, Buck has two volumes of it in his home study course, but not too many people go out there and make their actual con maps like this. And honestly, it really wasn't that hard to do. You got to bring paper and pencil with you and, and at least two or three markers. You throw out the markers, it helps you give you a perspective on what the structure looks like. <coughs> you know, you may not get the marker down the first time. You're going to have to move it and uh, just jot down your depths. And uh, <coughs> now that I have these maps, when I fish, the, I, you know, I know the structure so well now that uh, I'll, I'll troll and cast. And uh, I just keep on bouncing between, you know, these three areas here. And what I'll do is, you know... I'll make usually one trolling pass here. I'll turn around, hit it a second time here, turn it around, hit it a third time, and then I'll swing the boat around and I'll come this way and I'll make a pass here, turn around, I'll make a second pass here. And I fairly covered it pretty good. If there's any fish there I'll, that are active, I'll get them on the troll. If I don't catch anything on the troll, I've got my two casting positions here. I'll put the anchor down here and I'll fan cast off the end of this point. I'll spend maybe five ten minutes fan casting don't get anything i'll run over this little shorter point spend another five ten minutes fan casting here so i invested maybe 10 minutes trolling this and another uh maybe 20 minutes or so casting it about a half hour don't get any fish what i'll usually do is i'll put the lures in and i'll troll this rip wrap and come over here and gosh i think and maybe if i had 20 trips fishing this lake i think i caught a fish off Muskie off this riprap once. <laughs> but I just come down here and then I'll do the same thing. 
I'll make a trolling pass on the side of this thing. I'll make a quick turn back here, hit it again going this way. And then I'll hit it I'll down the side here. I'll make a turn. I'll come back, hit it again, come off the end of it here. If I don't get anything, that's three, four trolling passes I made. Don't get anything. I come over here to the end of the bar, anchor the boat, and start fan casting off the end here. And I've caught muskies plenty. As the more I got familiar with this lake, I caught more and more fish casting than I did trolling. Trolling is our teacher. It, it's going to show us where to spend our time casting. All right, got interrupted. I Where's my train of thought here? Okay, so, uh, all right, let's come over to this other structure here. I would come. This one wouldn't take long to check out since all the fish were coming up over here. I'd probably make three trolling passes here. Coming down here, turn around, hit it again this way, hit it a third time. And then would come in uh, pretty shallow here, put the boat up here, and just start fan casting this area here. But, um, and I would probably spend on average 20, 25 minutes at each structure. So in a uh, in about an hour, maybe an hour and 10 minutes, I'd fish all three. Then I would just start and do it all over again. Just keep on bouncing between these three structures here. Um, but let me go back and tell you a, 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 an interesting story here. Uh, that first year I fished it, when, when the fish muskies finally moved, and ever since that trip, when I finally moved, I was catching them pretty consistently the whole time. And I met one guy out on the lake. He was an old-timer, and he was trolling. Uh, as a matter of fact, he's the only person I've ever seen trolling other than myself out there. And he saw me get two muskies on the troll. I was by myself. So he finally came over and talked to me. Really nice guy. He saw I had, you know, he asked me, of course, what'd you catch it on? And I pull up the little spoon plug at the end of my rod. And he goes, oh, he goes, yeah, I, I used to have a few of those. I used to fish with those years ago. Uh, so he was familiar with spoon plug. Spoon plug. And, you know, he, of course, heard the name Buck Perry mentioned, but he didn't know much more about it than that. So, But he was a very friendly, nice guy. And uh, gave him a couple spoon plugs. And uh, I told him about my two trips I had out there earlier that year. That it, Boy, I came down here one day. I got nine. Then I came down the next weekend for one day, and I got ten. And he's the only one I told I told that story to. Uh, then I gave him a spoon plug, and about uh, he was using it. Then about 20 minutes later, I think I was fishing this structure, and he was making a pass down here, and I, he, he boated a nice muskie over here. So uh, it was fun. So I go back to the lake here. I'm at the launch ramp here. Uh, I can't remember if it was that same year or maybe the following year. I don't know. But I'm at the launch ramp here. The launch ramp is right over here. And I was launching, and a guy was coming out. And the guy was coming out, and he sees me, and he's like, uh, what are you fishing for? And I look, look at, it, at his boat, and he's got a big musky net. So I figure, okay, this guy's fishing for muskies. And musky fishing very, wasn't very popular in, in Illinois uh, at this time. Uh, you only had a handful of guys that fished this lake for muskies. Most of the guys fishing this lake were fishing for bass or panfish. Uh, so he asked me, you know, what I'm fishing for. And I figured, well, this must be a muskie guy with the big net in there. I'm like, well, you know, muskies and bass. And he goes, oh, you're fishing for muskies. This guy really wants someone to talk to. So I'm like, yeah. He goes, you know, how'd you do? He was just coming back out. He goes, oh, I had a great day. It was great. I had two follows. He's all excited about having two follows. So... Of course, I'm pumping them up. I'm like, oh, wow, two fouls. Oh, man, that's great. What a great day you had. You know, he's, you know, you can tell he's, you know, you know, getting a little bit, you know, proud of himself and all that. And uh, and then he says, yeah, he goes, the best I, uh, day I ever did out here is uh, um, I had, I can't remember if he said he got one in the boat or two in the boat. And he had another one or two fouls. And I was like, wow, you got two muskies out of here. And a couple more fouls on top of it. And I was like, you know, yeah, he goes, yep, yep, yep. And I go, wow, that's really good. And then he says, <laughs> I heard some story about some guy that came down here and got uh, nine muskies in one day. And I said, what? He goes, ah, I don't believe it either. I said, nine muskies? He goes, yep, yep, yep. I, that's a story going around here, but there's no way anyone can come down here and kiss nine muskies in one day. I'm keeping quiet. I'm not saying a word. Obviously, the old timer I met on the water, he's the only one I told that to. Local guy, he must have told, obviously, several people about it. And this guy heard it. And it was funnier than hell. And he's like, oh, I, I don't, I said, you're what? Nine muskies? I don't believe it either. There's no way anyone can come down here and catch nine muskies. 
And I just smiled. I'm like, wow. You know, when he went on his way. I went on my way. And I was just thinking to myself, man, should I? He doesn't know that he was talking to the guy that caught nine. And on the next trip, I caught ten. But I thought, I'm not going to burst his bubble and let him know that. I just kept quiet. But I, I think about that story all the time. It makes me laugh, though. Um, but I hope you learned something on mapping and interpretation. Once again, a lot of people seem to struggle with mapping, uh, but go out there with paper and pencil and markers and just be determined that you're going to draw these structures down. Now with modern, you know, with all these high definition maps we have, it, 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 it will make it a little bit easier for you. Like if I went down there now and I had this map here, well, first off, I would look at the map and I, you know, just as I found, it's all sh steep sharp dro dropping structures until you get to the dam area and it you can even look at this and see you got three structure situations here and looking at this it's sort of going to tell you that you got a little point here and you got a nice point here so these modern you know high definition maps are gonna should help everyone with their mapping interpretation but you want to get out the paper and pencil and just put it down there on yourself you looking at this you're not it's not going to tell you what the break is at where the sharper break is at Put it on paper and pencil, and you're going to have that information, and it's going to be with you forever every time you fish this lake. Uh, and that's it. Um, this was that other bar I was telling you about that I found. Other than the dam area here, and it's pretty much like this shows too. You can tell it. You got a little bit of a bigger bar than the other sh sharp. Th uh, this map isn't right here. You don't have. You don't have this over here. You don't have this over here. I think what they do is they combine a couple of different files that people send them and they mix it together and I don't know, but I, I know that this is not here at all, but uh, um, that's it. Well, I hope that uh, you learn something about mapping interpretation and I hope that you go out there and uh, get your own maps made, put it on pencil and paper. It's going to pay off for you. Oh, I didn't show some pictures. Let me show some pictures really quick. Remember, this is like in 94, 95, something like that. Um, uh, here's me. That's a young Jim Shell from uh, 1994, I think. Uh, probably the first year I was fishing and got some muskies. This was, yeah, it had to be the first year because they were all 32 to 34 inches that first year. Uh, here is my friend Mike that I took down there. And that's the biggest one we had got at the time. That was a 41, 42, something like that that he got off that one structure there and uh here is my friend bob fisher up we went down there a few times uh took my little brother down there a couple of times he had a good time fishing with him uh well there's another Young Jim Shell with a uh, that was that had to be the first year because they were running like I say 32 to 34 inches that first year, they naturally get bigger. And uh, you know what? Glad I bought this picture up. What do you see in this picture? Two markers right there, throwing out those markers and mapping those structures. Um, now I've got uh, I don't know maybe it's five ten minutes of video. I've got video from the vault from 1994. If you're interested, watch that now. Uh, of some of the fish that we caught out there. Um, hope you learned something about mapping interpretation. And uh, I'll show you some video here of us catching some of these fish. Uh, thanks for watching. Right, five morning. minutes. Bob's got his first muskie in Otter Lake. Coming right after you. Yeah, they'll swim towards you. Our second pass on the structure, and we got our first muskie. the water over there. Just came up to the top. I bet you it's a 30 inch. It might be a bass. Broke the water, it might be a big bass. That's a small husky. He just might jump in the boat. Yeah. I love it. I love it. He's got two hooks in him. Let's play out here a little bit. 
Tell me when you're quiet. Not yet. Boy, he's got a lot of energy. This plate out. Done? Yep. All right. In the afternoon, it's about uh, 2.15. Down by the dam again, we picked up another muskie. I changed the and put on one of these red, uh, we'll call it the red chartreuse with black on it. Coming right at me. It's not a big one. It's not as big as the one I got to the boat this morning and lost it. But uh, it's coming right at me. Oh, she just spit it. Did you see it spit? Well, you want the net? That was good of a board. I have not. Oh, it's not so much. I don't know. I don't know. How's it what, how's, what, how, how big do you think it is? It's what time is it? About uh, it's almost dark out. Dusk out. Bob got a fish at the dam here. His uh, fifth one, fifth muskie of the day that he hooked. Is that thing giving you enough life? Yeah. We're gonna play with him here a little bit. You thought he was snagged. Got one casting here at the uh, contact point. He smashed it. Move out of the way. Woo! How big is he? Ooh, not bad. Ooh, that's a nice one. Not bad. Ooh, that's a nice I'll get the net. Ironic, we got our lines all tangled up trolling. So while Jim's taking out the tangles, casted a geez big eight nine inch Rapala. Had one hit one miss me at the boat, and four casts later got this one 30, 33 inches. <laughs> fat fish, according to Jim. Yeah, fat fish for a thirty two incher for sure. 33 incher. So we're gonna throw Look this, at the girth on them. We're gonna throw this puppy back in the water. Right, let me take a up. picture of this sucker, man. Hold him up so you can see him. Hold him straight up. All right, talk. Hey, Ken. About a 17, 18, 20 pounder. Sunday morning, about 8 40 inches long. Hold and him a, straight up. A 200 spoon plug. Or 100. Otter Lake. Otter Lake. Look at that sucker. Yeah, eat your heart out, Ken. It's about, I don't know, three hours later, after getting a 20 pound plus musky, according to Jim, this is a, a go four, four and a half pounds. Maybe five, maybe We're five. Gonna it was 20, now, now see, that's a spoon plugging bass. It was 21 inches. We were trolling uh, with 100s that are supposed to go 12 to 15 feet, and I think Jim was eating a banana and got a little too close to shore and I started yeah. banging like crazy and uh, Well I knew that fish was there for you Mike. Oh sure. That's a big bass. That's a monster. It, it, my first muskie on, he's claiming it's a big fish and it just jumped and I missed it. <laughs> muskie number one I hope. I hope it's a muskie, it's a muskie right? It's a muskie. Here it jumped again! Oh! oh. Rolling I on caught the, the edge of it damn it. You're running like crazy. Do you think it's uh he's jumping again? He's gonna jump again. Where? Here he comes. Where you at? Now take your time, Bob. Oh shit! Just missed him. Lost him. Ah! Oh. Did you get it on the jump? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Casting. Got one casting. Oh, jeez. Jim, I look like a drunk with the camera here. Which, which side you got the fish on? In the back of the boat now. Got him casting. Bob got one trolling. He missed it. You saw earlier in the tape. And I got one casting right here in the spoon plug. I think he hit earlier. So I told you I thought I hit bottom. Bad fish. Let's see if I can... See if I can tear him out here and get him in the boat. Oh yeah, hit hit on the cast. Felt great. Hold him still, Jim. Is this focus or something? Or is this auto focus? Auto focus. Okay. Yeah, he's about 34, I think. That's the twin of the other one. I'll try to do a. Uh, 
Well, this will be fun. I get this on tape. <laughs> yeah, get it. Stitches in my hair. You got him. Yeah, you got him. Okay. You just got a bit. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> Oh, I'm a cast. Very healthy fish. Fish that that fish stinks, Jim. Oh, I'm... Bob hooked a fish on Otter Lake. <laughs> but will he land him? He's lost every muskie today. Oh. Muskie? I don't know, 30 yards back, he came up and he splashed. This structure's been good today. This is a, the long bar by the third, dam. The third must be off this structure. We got, yeah, this is where I, I got mine cast. And came off the tip, too. This is this is the one where the previous, where we got three jumps out of a muskie and then lost him on the boat. Just grab them with your mouth, with your thumb, can't you? Uh, I don't think so. How big is he, Bob? I don't know. I think that's uh, three, four pounds. What do you think? Three, four pound bass, Jim? It's a little bigger than that. It's a little bit bigger than that. Hey, that looks like, that's what we, what we threw back two weeks ago. Is this? 21 inches. This is, that's probably the same one. No, it's not because the tail was, was all. Hold him up, Bob. What do you say, Bob? Nice fish. Where the hell's my muskie? <laughs> Loose, Jim. You gotta, you have to nut this thing because I can feel the plug wiggle. Oh. You want me to nut him for you? Got you excited for a while. Yeah, well, he, went, he did a good job. He did a good count of himself. I got this, uh, stuff is... He's not that, he's legal, but he's not... He's no state record, huh? No, he's no state well, let's get him in net. You want me to net him? Oh, Just get that on film. <laughs> Part of it. I can net him. Okay, I'll, I'll keep the camera rolling here then. Legal fish here. Otter Lake legal fish. Bob rolls. Try and up himself. How's he hooked? He's, he's doing pretty good. I'm nice fish. Spoon plugging. Oh shit, he's not out bad great. You need a hand? Way to go, Bob! Let's let's uh, get a length on him. Okay, so first cast, anchor, 800. First cast on this spot. It's, uh, Saturday morning. We got his front coming in Otter Lake. Got a real fat muskie hit on the first cast of the side of the boat. We're gonna throw him back. Let me see how long he is. Should get a couple photos. We're on, uh... <laughs> okay, here we are on. Otter Lake, uh, here's another first cast fish caught in a Spoon Plug 800 series. Jim got a twin like this one yesterday on Coffeen. Uh, we were trolling a, a point on uh, a bar on Coffeen and uh, actually a hump. Jim hooked one fish, we went right back to the cast and first cast he got a he got a second fish similar in size. Uh, cold front went through yesterday morning but uh, the bass are still moving a little bit, so it's been a good time. And we got that 
Five guys had fat bass once again on Otter Lake. First day after a cold front, lousy conditions. First cast, uh, deep on structure to fish it in about 25 feet of water. Yeah, 25 feet of water. We know it was 25 feet because we snagged up on the break that we think it came from and uh, put fishes in position the boat over it and found out it was 25 feet. Had a great uh, long weekend trip. Uh, good learning experience on the casting positions.